Hey guys, so thanks for reaching out for uh, my little intermolar width experiment. Um, just based on all the stuff I've gone through health wise and how much I've learned about you know, just basically what this one number tells us as far as like just our ability to breathe well through the nose, maybe why we always have a stuffy nose, you know, whether people breathe well or don't whether someone has enough room in their mouth for their tongue or they don't, or even just, you know, if someone is basically gonna be more susceptible to sleep disordered breathing issues just because their jaw is small. I mean, there's a lot to be said about this number. And like I said, this isn't an exact science. Um, you know, all bodies compensate and can get away with a lot of things, so just kind of more of you know there's numbers obviously that are more towards the optimal standards for health versus those that have you know a lower number when it comes to intermolar width that's not to say the number says anything or it's to be used as a diagnosis it's just kind of more of a tool of awareness and that's why I want to do this whole thing uh, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send uh, you a uh, little basically like three by three inch square here. What I would tell you to do is uh, just kind of peel the uh, paper off the bite tray. And then, you know, goal on this is we're gonna wanna trace the outline of the teeth. So this, we're gonna be measuring the distance between the first set of molars from the very inside edge to the inside edge across the way. So what I usually tell people is you're gonna take the wax bite and I want you to kind of bite down on it, almost like you're trying to pierce it, especially in the back, so that we're really getting some good indentation. So. probably say go for like a 10 count on there and then what I would tell you to do is kind of dry it off and then what I've done is I'll go and underneath the piece of paper here and I'll use like a colored pencil and I'll just kind of sure that it doesn't move and then what I'll do is after I get some and then what I'll have you do is kind of measure in millimeters, like I said, from that first molar to the first molar on the other side. So, as you can see in here, like mine will be measured in millimeters. Um, if you only have like a ruler, you'll have to do some math on here, but for every inch on a ruler it is good for about 25.4 millimeters. So just kind of figuring out like what that's at. And then, you know, what I've done is, uh, sent you guys uh, basically just a little questionnaire and that's just for me just to start to collect data for myself um, just becoming aware of you know just for most people where they tend to sit how many people have had braces been breastfed you know have issues um, but I'd love it if you guys could send back the questionnaire and then also after you guys do this 
there's a way you guys could basically just kind of put your name on the top, birth date, and then you guys could put your intermolar width kind of measurement and send that back to. But I just think for myself, like this is just important as far as starting to learn. Um, you know, in the next year, my goal is to get a few hundred people in my gym just all different ages, just to get a good sample size and kind of see some trends we start to see, just you know, who's been diagnosed with sleep apnea, who hasn't, for those who have, you know, what does their jaw size tend to be, people that breathe really well, you know, is that typically all people with large numbers. Um, but I think the biggest thing is, you know, for me, up until a few years ago before I did any expansion in my jaw, like my upper jaw was 28 millimeters. And we're talking about basically 24 millimeters plus roughly one millimeter per year of age up until you're 18. You know, I basically had the upper jaw of a four year old breathing through the nose of a four year old and no shit I had breathing issues, asthma, allergies, and was sick my entire life. And I think now to where I just expanded my jaw, now it's 42 millimeters. So here, um, it's crazy to think that like I no longer have any allergies. I can literally ride an assault bike outside in the pollen and like I feel nothing anymore. And it really just makes me realize for all those years, neti pot, flow knees, allergy shots, and then my, the fact that none of that really did much. It's not like my allergies went away when I took that stuff. It was just more of like, those are my only options, so I'm gonna do it, but none of it really changed anything. And now I look at my ability just to take so much more air in every breath fact that my allergies are gone um it's just been pretty cool but i appreciate you guys uh obviously reaching out and if there's any questions i can ever answer you know obviously i'm not a doctor i just read a lot about all this different stuff and you know, i think some people are just kind of unsure once they start to learn this stuff like Maybe what actions to take next. And, you know, I think there's a series of steps when you get into this world because one doctor doesn't do it all. You know, you've got basically ENTs and pulmonologists kind of working on airway. You've got the sleep doctors looking at, you know, is there an issue at nighttime? And then there's these different resolutions with facial surgeons, dentists, and orthodontists. Whether it's surgical or non-surgical, there's so much good stuff out there to get help with this. Um, it's just a matter of, okay, like, how do I start to put the pieces into play? And I think another big component I've learned is, I mean, after looking and learning from some of the best doctors in the world, there's not going to be doctors everywhere that know all about this. So then, you know, depending on where you are and what you need done, is it a matter of getting on a plane or not? But, you know, hopefully uh, this is the beginning of you starting to kind of look into your airway a little bit more and take some action. So thanks again.